Hey guys, it's Dima from Demostech, and today we are checking the Pislar PRTG. The Pislar PRTG is a network monitoring software, and it is mainly designed for a work environment, but we are going to check the free version at our home and see what we can get from it. What's cool about this software? It can pretty much recognize the network and scan everything automatically and you just need to provide some credentials, some instructions. Also you can as always configure everything yourself, but it should go pretty much straightforward and automatic. You can install it on a Windows without any issue and there's not much knowledge actually required and later you can just visually see pretty much everything in your network and let's see how it will go. Now I did use that software at work but we switched to something else due to some licensing issues. Basically the software can cost a lot if you really need lots of sensors and since I'm at home I don't think I will need any sensors beyond the 100 that you get for free. You do get a trial version for 30 days with no limits and if you actually pay and you want to stop paying for some reason, you won't get any updates. While if you're on the free version, though you are limited to 100 sensors, you will get free updates without issues. So that's kind of confusing how they work, but the software is pretty good for home usage, I guess. And let's try this out and we'll see how it will go. Again, I never used it at home, so I'm pretty excited to see how it will go. If you'll go to the Pistler website and just search for the download, you will find it. You will be able to download the PRTG, but whenever you'll try to download it, you'll be asked for your work mail. And since we want to install it at home, I found a link that actually allows you to install that for home usage without work mail. The link will be in the description of this video as always. So we'll hit download and as you can see, we already get a license key. You can just go ahead and copy it, though so it should automatically be copied. And if the download won't start for you, as it doesn't start for me, just hit here. After you finish downloading, you'll be able to install it. And I guess it will be a really regular installation without anything special, but let's see. Now here you'll still have to enter your mail. Hit next. After a few minutes of installation, you'll get a new pretty much website of your local machine that will try to start now and this will start already the PRTG network monitor system. And we are already started. Basically you will be able to change all the credentials and everything later, but for now let's press login. And here we go, we already see our system and I think it's already even scanning things so it might find some things and it might automatically add things. If we look closely we already have here auto discovery in progress which is good for us. Again, I didn't touch or edit anything. It's just by itself starting to do all that things and that's actually good for us. For home usage, as I said, it will be very simple and easy to use. After some more time, as you can see, we already have here some sensors. Now, again, it might not be perfect and probably it isn't, but as you can see, it did recognize our QNAP and it did recognize some other devices, which uh, it just added a ping to them because it's not sure what it is. For the QNAP, for example, it added actually ping, SSL certificate, SSL security, HTTP, HTTP, 8080, HTTPS, basically pretty much whatever the QNAP has. And it also has some other devices, which I'm not even sure what are they currently. I think I know what this subnet is. And that's pretty much my main subnet. So yeah, that's kind of weird that it actually edited it separately. And it is still scanning it. So I guess it might find some more sensors and more things. And basically what I'm interested in now is actually to try and give the QNAP some credentials and option to actually scan, for example, how much free space does it have. 
So let's try to do that. Let's actually go to the settings and here we are. And then we can send somewhere the credentials. Now, before I continue with the QNAP, I want to actually add to it some sensors. And I want to try to add the sensors for the free space, for example. So let's go to add sensors. And as you can see, we have predefined things here. We have lots of things basically that are pretty much automated. So I'm going to try and see if we have something for QNAP. And as you can see, everything works with SNMP. Let's choose the SNMP QNAP logical disk. And it will probably fail for now because it doesn't have any credentials for the QNAP yet. Obviously it failed and I did only now enable the SNMP on the QNAP and I think it won't actually find it anyways yet. So let's go back to the QNAP and as you can see it might take some time at first to actually know where what to press but that's not too difficult. So let's go to the settings of the QNAP and find here the credentials for SNMP. Here they are. We don't want to inherit them and pretty much the community name is the only thing that I changed to Demostech. And that's pretty much it. Click save. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll go to add sensor again. Enter QNAP. So let's try now again SNMP QNAP logical disk. And as you can see, it loaded pretty much immediately in no time. It knows that we have a mirror disk volume, drive 1, 2, and it's ext4. So let's hit create. And that's it, it added the sensor. And I guess it will take some time, but pretty much in no time you should be able to see it. We can also do something like this, scan now. And we can also try also this, resume. And here it is, it's already up and we can check what's going on here and pretty much we already can see if there was any downtime, how much free space we have, what is the minimum, what is the maximum since uh, it's actually scanning, what's the percentage of it and pretty much we already are ready. We can even set whenever we want to get triggers, so for example uh, notification triggers, if it goes beyond something, etc. If you want to receive any notification that is beyond, for example, 90%, let's actually try to create something, you know what? Let's add a threshold trigger. And whenever free space is above, for example, let's say 75%, 75 for at least 60 seconds, that's another important thing, you can pretty much do here as much as you want, so in case uh, for a moment you copied something big but it's just temporarily, it won't notify you on that, you can change that and then you pretty much can check whatever notification you want to receive. By the way, there is an application for your Android device or iPhone that you can connect and also receive notifications there or see everything that you see here from there. But for now we won't set any notification, we'll just set it to be as a sort of a warning. And also whenever the condition clears, so if you clear some space, it will send you another notification if you want. For now let's just hit this, let's go again here and I want to see for example what's going on over some time so we can hit live data and we can see here a graph of our disk space and here of a percentage and over time it will actually show us different data here and since I just installed it you will not see that much data here but it's pretty easy to see here what's going on over time. So for example if I leave this as it is I will see at night for example that the space will fall and then go back and that's because I have a backup scheduled for night time and it will back up a new backup and whenever it finishes it will actually remove an older one. So that's for example something that I will be able to easily see here. Now not only that you have live data you can also see from 2 days, 30 days, 365 and even any historical data or even logs if something happened or whenever something happened or changed. So that's quite convenient here as well. Now just to be able to see something, let's go back to our devices 
and let's search for example ping to our DNS. So for me it's 1.1.1.1 for now and let's try to see what we have here if we'll go to live data and as you can see this is something that changes quite a lot so we can pretty much see how many milliseconds it had. We have here maximum for fins, we can see averages, minimum, so everything is pretty much simple but yet you can configure lots of stuff here. Now again, it depends a lot on the devices that you have and the things that you can do with them or not, because not every device has for example SNMP, some things will not be as easy to actually do with this thing as with the tune-up and you can actually even set a map so for example you can create a map of your house and map some smart home devices or put printers wherever they are put even uh, pings to a tv you'll be able to know when it's on or not for example that's something that can actually be useful prtg basically has lots of stuff that it can do now everything depends on how deep you want to go with prtg and you can go quite deep you can go so deep but actually whenever something happens, PRTG will start for example a partial script or some specific application that will do something for that device for example. So let's say that I am running out of this space on the QNAP and I do have some sort of history folders. So let's say that I create a partial script or some specific command that will clear that history and it will run automatically whenever I'm running out of space on QNAP. That's something that you can do as well. Obviously that's not something that we are going to cover today, but it's just an example on how deep you can go with it. Now keep in mind that for the notifications, you'll need to set everything here, so SMTP and everything, and that, and that might not be that easy sometime, but I'm pretty sure that you can get that covered. And if you want, you can actually buy some credits on something like Bulk SMS or any other service here, or even use a custom as far as I know you can. Yeah, here it is, enter a custom URL. And then you pretty much can receive SMS to your phone whenever something happens on your system at home without any issue. If we'll go here to Corn Probes, you can actually allow someone to access or deny someone to access. There are lots of things that you can actually do and also how long you want to keep the historical data that will determine pretty much how much the PRTG will use the space of your computer. Keep that in mind obviously. You can go to user accounts or even user groups and create other accounts. Again remember that this system is more meant for network usage at work and not for home but again there's no problem to actually use it at home as you can see. So that's quite a lot of things that you can do. Now one thing that I want to show you that actually you can, you can use at work pretty much and not specifically for home, as you can see the devices here, it doesn't look that quite nice. So you have some different things here, you have basically smaller ones, you can go to medium, large, extra large and as you can see the data that you can see here changes. Now, there are two ways that are a little bit better, I guess, for work environment, because you can basically switch it on a TV, so everyone in your help desk team or IT team can see whatever you need, and you can basically choose this one. So basically whatever is not in green, you can immediately recognize and do something with it. By the way, the QNAP for some reason is yellow, let's check this in a moment. And my favorite is this sun sort of type and that's quite amazing, I really loved that one. We always used that one at work. By the way, we're not using PRTG anymore at work since we moved to Zabbix. And Zabbix is even more advanced, it's totally free and there's no limitation to what it can do. The problem is it's quite harder to configure and it's not something that I'm going to cover on a YouTube video for sure. But let's go, for example, to the QNAP and as you can see I already forgot that SSL security check, something is wrong with that, let's see, warning, lookup value, weak, weak protocols available. So basically uh, you know that you are not fully secure with your QNAP, that's something for example that you should handle 
and without that system I wouldn't probably even know about it. And now I can actually do something about it. So that's quite convenient. Let's go back to the devices again for a moment and see what else we can find here maybe. We have the internet itself. Now I don't believe that we can actually set our router to show how much data everything is consuming, but it might be possible as well. Let's try to see that. And let's try to add our router, so let's try SNMP traffic. And again, it will fail for now because I didn't set the community for this device. So let's hit cancel. Let's go back to our device, hit settings, and you see how easy it gets? Trust me, it will just take some time and then you'll master it in no time. Let's disable inherit and pretty much set here the demo stack again. Hit save. Now we can go again, add sensor, choose here SNMP, let's try the SNMP traffic. As you can see it loaded immediately and we pretty much can choose whatever we want here. Uh, it's a little bit not so convenient to actually know what's where, so yours obviously might vary, but it might take some time to actually figure out what is where. Now, I do see that this is the WLAN, though this here is showing as Wi-Fi. That's quite of weird. We do have here some, oh, it's software loopback, we don't need that. Let's actually choose pretty much all of those because we don't really care for now and I guess we'll be able to find later which one is our internet connection. And we can also add here additional channels if we want, some additional things like traffic in, traffic out, if something is wrong you can pretty much invert it here. And let's hit create and see what we get. Now if you remember it won't start immediately so we'll hit this and we'll also hit this to scan now and as you can see it's starting up. Uh, it does take some time so keep that in mind. Obviously we won't have enough data for now to know pretty much what is what but my guess is that this one probably the internet connection though again it might be my PC. I'm not fully sure, but I might be able to find on my router which one is which. So that might be more convenient, but for now, as you can see, we can go to live data, for example, and we can also rescan it now. And as you can see, we already have some data. That's quite convenient. We have traffic in, we have traffic of total, traffic out. So that's quite nice. Let's do it again now. And as you can see, it's only rising for now. So that's something that you can also play with. You can pretty much figure out who is actually accessing the internet all the time and giving you bad pins for your games, for example, or something like that. That's another convenient thing actually to find out. I'm not fully sure how easy it will be for you, but that's another thing that you can do here. And we have some W10 traffic here that I see. So we can go here and we can see that it does have some traffic. Now sadly you cannot actually see exactly who it is, but again you can pretty much see from which direction it's going, so if it's something on the Wi-Fi or something else, you'll be able to see it here. Let's go back to our devices and as you can see this thing is growing. So for example I could add here my printer and actually it would even scan it automatically and find everything. The problem is my printer is mostly off because I don't use it that much. And that's uh, pretty much it for this video. You can go here as deep as you want, as I said, but it will take a long, long time actually if we'll do that. And it's just uh, pretty much a first impression and some cover on how to install and how to get the PRTG working at your home network. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one!